This show is brought to you by the This Old Nerd store, powered by Amazon.com. Visit store.thisoldnerd.com. Find everything we've talked about and so much more at the store. Plus, since it's powered by Amazon, it's safe and secure. Buy from the This Old Nerd store, you get tech, we get a commission. It's win-win. Welcome back to This Old Nerd. I'm Aya Zaktar. And you know, one of the coolest things we like about technology, it's like living in the future. You know what? In the future, though, you've got video calls. And this is a video call. Let's get to me in real life. What you need to know about video calls is it never looks as pretty as the demos. But you know what? Ours look pretty good. And we're going to show you how to make video calls look fantastic. Now, you may be asking yourself, hey, why on earth are you doing an episode about video calling? Well, if you aren't aware, I have this guy. And this guy is in a lot of demand. People want to see him. And if I'm going to do a video, I want it to look really good. And I'm kind of a video nut, as you can see. Now, you might be thinking as well, hey, this is nowhere near something that should be on This Old Nerd. Well, by the way, This Old Nerd episodes are based on things I've actually done in real life. Cutting cable and running a network in your house and all that other stuff. Yeah, I've done that in real life. That's why they're episodes. And I really think that at this point, this is something that people should know because video calling is finally taking off to the point where everybody's doing it and the video could look better. So I want to share this information with you guys. And I think, hopefully, I'll give you a good enough argument that your partner will accept it too. If you go to Skype.com or Apple.com and take a look at their video chat software, you're going to see a nice, pretty demo picture. You got these people, they look so vibrant and happy. You know why? It's because those demos are not necessarily the normal user. It's probably set up by a professional. And a professional knows something that normal people usually don't know. You need good lighting, you need good audio, and you need a steady camera. The other thing is, how does your video chat end up looking? Let's talk to your mom. I bet she shot like this. Like there's a light behind her and she's looking at the monitor wherever you are, so you're not actually looking at their backlight. And That's not the way our videos have to look, by the way. So let's say you and I are gonna have a video chat. You can be pretty sure that my chat is gonna look more like this. Pretty nice lighting, audio is good, because we have to take care of this. We're living in the future here, but we've got to work with the technology we have. What materials are you going to need? You're going to need lights. You're going to need a camera. We're using a DV cam. You can even use like a little Xbox cam. You're going to need a microphone. Not necessarily this one. This is a blue snowball microphone. We have a lav mic here. You're going to need a computer, some kind of software. So that's pretty much it. Now, one of the first things you need to know about setting up a video call is your lighting. We're going to be doing a variation on the very standard three-point lighting technique. This is used all the time in interviews in Hollywood. It's a really simple idea. Right now, we only have one light on us. See, it's really moody. A lot of harsh shadows. We're going to need a second light. So our first light, by the way, is called the key light. It's usually our brightest. And if you turn over here, you can actually see it. We're using giant work lights. Okay, so that's the first light. That's our key light. We're going to have our fill light. Our fill light is usually not as bright as our key. This one actually might be brighter because it's closer. If you see where it is, it's nearby. So what's going on is it's washing out the shadows. So if we again, we go with one, shadows, less shadows. That's just two points. You're going to need a third point of light. And what that does is it separates you from the background. So right now, I'm pretty much popping out of this background. It's red and I'm wearing black, so it's pretty easy. But if you have a third light, we have this third light. These are our, our lamps for our you know, regular living room living. Or you could have, like we have here, windows. You're going to have a nice light behind you. That way, you have a separation between you and the background. You have light on your face. Everything looks good. Now you look pretty. But you're going to need a camera. What I have in my hand, here is a Sony Handycam. We use this as our camera when we do all kinds of calls. When I call my brother up in Philadelphia and I want to trash talk him face to face, I use this. Now, why do I use a DV cam over something like an Xbox cam? Well, it's all about control. When it comes to a camera like this, a Sony Handycam Precision LCD monitor, all kinds of fanciness, what you have is something you don't have with those little cameras. You can actually change your settings right here, change your focus, change your exposure, and there's no software layer. I mean, yeah, sure, there's software on this thing, but that's not running on your computer that's doing your video conferencing. In our case, we hook this up via FireWire. You can see in these ports that there's a little jack for a four-pin FireWire connector. You take a four-pin 
uh, wire to a six pin wire. You connect that to a FireWire 400 port on your computer. You might not have them anymore because that's almost a dead standard. These days, cameras will be coming with USB 3.0, which will be fast enough to handle even HD stuff. Now, this is an old camera. You can go out and go to eBay and probably get an SD camera for really cheap. Actually, you don't even need to go to eBay for cheapness. You can go, just go to like to the, this old nerd store and you'll probably find a Canon that you could hook up really cheap. Oh yeah, another reason why you'd want a DV cam over with something else, if you're going to move the camera around, they usually have optical image stabilization. Like I'm doing this right now, I'm holding the camera with one hand and even though I'm floating around, the shot's still pretty steady because of the optical image stabilization. If you don't want to shout out the big bucks for a DV cam or an HDV cam, whatever, you can get something like this. This is a very cheap Xbox 360 cam and it works on Macs and PCs and it's via USB. And what's kind of neat about it, it's got a little focus ring on the front. So if you're sitting at your desk and you want to stay in focus, just turn the ring, no problem. But one of the downsides is just kind of sits on the monitor. That's why I like DV cams. You can attach it to something like this. This is my ninja stick of doom. Very dangerous with the baby. I can't do everything, I'm only one-handed. But what it really is, is a monopod that actually turns into a tripod. It's a Sunpack VersaPod 2. Now, this is gonna be interesting. I did not expect to be holding a baby while showing this, but you can see, you can see me trying to open this up and not die. It's got a nice little foot. So you can place it down and stay steady. And what's kind of nice about this versus a tripod, tripod's really, really bulky from top to bottom versus this thing, very thin stick with a nice footprint. You can hide this in your setup really easily. So we have our camera, we have our lights. Now you gotta worry about your audio. In our case, I like using a shotgun mic. And this is just a windsock. This is from Asden, it's the SGM2X. Handles sound from this direction. That's why it's a shotgun mic. You point it and it only cap captures audio in this direction. Now, you can put an adapter in it and it'll become an omnidirectional thing and you might not want that unless you want like a nature sounding thing, but we're just talking about video calls. Now, how are you gonna connect this thing which uses an XLR to a camera like this that has a mini jack? Well, there's an adapter for that. This is an XLR to mini jack adapter and this allows you to connect some really good microphones to your camcorder. We connect our adapter right to the mic and then we attach this piece to our camcorder. And if you've ever put your headphones in, a, in an iPod, you understand how to do this. Bingo, now that's attached. Okay, so we got our camera. We have a couch, that's where we're gonna sit. Now our lights have been adjusted, so I'm being lit right now, but normally there'd be another light over there. But if we shot it that way, I'd look all backlit and look bad. So we're gonna take our four pin to six pin Firewire cable. We're gonna attach it to our camera. Yeah, kid, this is gonna be awesome. Now, that's my kid over there. He's having a good old time. He is now sideways in his bassinet. What are you doing? Ah, get over here. Ah, okay. Now, fire wire cable to our MacBook here on our, on our coffee table. What else are we gonna need? We're gonna need? We're gonna need our audio. Now, in our case, our little adapter was too short. So, what we're going to do is use Overkill. This is an XLR cable. You can get these anywhere that they sell XLR cables. You can't just go into like a supermarket. They're not gonna have it. Attach that. Attach that to the microphone in. Yes, I know you can't see what I'm doing over here. Actually, you can. Come on in, come on close. Let's show you what's going on here. So there's the, there's the FireWire. And this is where the mic in is. It's a little tight here, but that's okay. So now we have our XLR cable, nice long cable. We have our microphone. We have our kid over there, that's good. We're gonna, we're gonna have a video conference with mom. Apparently we're gonna show this kid who apparently wants to talk right now. Attach our XLR to our microphone. We're gonna place our microphone where we're going to be, which is way over here, okay? Because what's gonna happen? We're really gonna end up playing against my brother, NHL hockey on the 360 online. But I wanna make sure I can see him and he sees me. So this will be pointed towards the camera, a camera towards the couch. I'll be able to play the game here and the laptop will be facing me over there. So that way I can see his expression as I'm kicking his butt and then I lose in the final seconds because that's what he always does. Anyway, what you would do is you'd go into your settings and tell your computer that this is your camera and I want the audio routed 
through the camera. That takes care of pretty much everything right there. All right, now it's time to talk about the most important part of any of our projects, the partner acceptance rating. Now, you probably are not gonna get away with the stuff I get away with. Because unless you're married to my wife, which I don't think you are, you might be, and if you are, I don't think that's legal. But anyway, if you're married to my wife, she lets me do these crazy things because, well, I think she actually likes the output. We get really good video quality. Because when we see our video, like let's say this one is of our kid here, with our little camera, looks pretty good, you know, that's all right. But when we shoot our video for our video conferences, they look phenomenal. We look like the demo people. So, what's the argument you want to put forth? You know, I think that when, when we are making a, an appearance anywhere, that it's critical that we both look as great as possible. And the problem with the current setup we have of our living room lights and the windows behind us, it makes us look bad. And the thing is, we should really show off your beauty. It's not your fault that the camera stinks at handling the light. No, it's not your fault at all. But the problem is that our camera is not very good and we don't have enough lighting. Now, if you know, like when we go to the Apple store, how it looks really great, look up, next time we go, let's go up there. I will show you the things. Beautiful lights above. That's what we need too. I think we can, we can pull this off. Oh, and now we could go and get some really fancy lamps if you like. Little gooseneck lamp, huh? And then if we have a second light, it'll remove any harsh shadows. So you look, look like a movie star when you're talking. Isn't that great? See now my, my wife behind the camera is smiling at that argument because it's a good argument. You know it's a good argument. Admit it, it's a good argument. So let's do a recap of what we've done today. We have in our living room, we have a lighting setup based on the three point lighting method that's used by like every Hollywood studio ever in existence. We got our key light, our fill light, and our backlight. Key light is the brightest one, fill less so, and your backlight is really about removing shadows and separating you from the background. So that's gonna vary. Okay, we have our camera. We're choosing the DV cam because we have a lot of control. Really great. Firewire to our laptop. XLR microphone over here to our shotgun mic. We have an angry baby, so we're gonna grab him. Let's see, what else we have? We have the audio, we have the video, we have the lighting, we have you on my microphone. And all you have to do now is the talking part. Right on cue. Absolutely fantastic. I am I as Axar for this old nerd and reminding you to ask yourself this question, how's your tech life? Because it could be better.